On July 1, 2024, on the morning the astronomy world confirmed its third interstellar visitor, something else lit up the screens. A global split. In China, crisp, high-resolution frames started circulating three eye atlas with a teardrop coma etched against vacuum, streaking fast. At that same moment, some of the West's sharpest eyes slipped offline. Scheduled upgrades here, safety patches there, and a NASA pipeline slowed by the shutdown. Coincidence? Maybe, but the timing was brutal. 3. iAtlas was different from the first two. Oumuamua, 2017. Dry, no visible coma. A tiny non-gravitational push no one could quite square. Borisov, 2019. Textbook comet, water-rich. Chemistry exactly where it should be. 3. iAtlas arrived larger, brighter, faster, already wearing a faint halo far from the inner system. 60 km per seconds inbound, a late October swing past the sun, then gone forever. Within minutes of the Minor Planet Center bulletin, Slack channels across observatories went electric. We need spectra tonight. And then the notices started stacking. Keck D most offline for detector work. Near spec in hibernation. AO shutter errors. Gemini South security patch pushed. Window lost in a blunt internal email. Here's why that hits so hard. An interstellar object doesn't wait for Tuesday. The light curve those tiny brightness flickers can reveal spin state, jets, even hints of structure. Miss one night and the story stutters, miss a week and it fractures. Meanwhile, the circulating Chinese frames showed that teardrop coma stretching like a windsock in radiation pressure. If you want clean, verified updates, not rumor loops, tap subscribe now so the next interstellar sprint doesn't pass you blind. It takes a second. It keeps this reporting independent and fast. Okay, back to 3i Atlas and the puzzle that unfolded while half the world blinked. We expected continuous photometry and rapid spectra, minutes apart frames to catch jet torques, multiband lines to map chemistry. Instead, reality tripped on logistics. Keck's spectrograph swap knocked out the exact instrument tiered for faint, fast movers. Gemini's post-attack patching landed on the wrong week. Even NASA's pipeline crawled a shutdown echo, rippling through calibrations and catalogs that other teams quietly rely on. Meanwhile, amateurs stepped in. Rooftops, farm fields, balcony rigs, global scatter that filled blanks the giants left open. Stack enough modest frames and you still get truth. 3i Atlas wasn't spinning clean. The light curve hinted non-principal axis rotation, a tumble maybe with precession. That matters, a tumbling nucleus responds to sunlight and venting like a coin near the end of its spin, wobble, flare, settle, wobble again. If 3i Atlas is a rubble pile, a loosely bound aggregate, the microthrust from jets won't just push, it will twist. Over days that write signatures into the orbit tiny deviations that let you solve for mass and moment of inertia. That's why high cadence mattered, and why gaps sting. Physics hides in the in-between. Then there were the unofficial images tagged to Purple Mountain and Yunnan that social feeds loved. A tear-shaped coma, the bright edge toward the sun, the tail more a diffuse envelope than a clean lance. Spectral snippets attached to those posts, said CO2 dominant. H2O present but secondary with whispers of COS. That would paint a hybrid not Borisov pure, not Oumuamua dry, but forged in a boundary zone where hot and cold trade materials. Audit time. Archivist checked MPC, MAST, ESO. Result, no official Chinese submissions for those frames. Every citable photon atlas survey, Gemini VLT, HST, tests had Western provenance with headers and timestamps. So do we bin the other images? No. We quarantine them from conclusions until provenance catches up. Photons plus paperwork equals knowledge. That tear shape wasn't just pretty. It behaved, and behavior is physics. The sunward edge remained dense and bright, implying forward scattering from fine grains. The halo morphed over hours in a way that supported a slow, wobbling spin. Classic comets often set a stable anti-solar tail. 3i Atlas looked like the shape of patchy venting sculpted in real time. Patchy venting means geography. Active regions waking as the sun rotates across the surface. Think stove burners, under a cracked crust one flares, then cools, 
as the rotation turns that patch into night. With CO2 driving if the claim spectra hold, those burners can light earlier and farther out from the sun than water vents do. Because CO2 sublimates at lower temperatures, add the tumble, and jets don't just shape the halo, they torque the body. That torque writes into the light curve as quasi-periodic brightening, fading, and into trajectory as minute, non-gravitational drift. Capture enough of that drift and you bound mass. That's why the size estimates 30 to 50 kilometers mattered. An object that big with strong outgassing but modest drift implies it's massive enough to shrug off a lot of jet push. There's also the color talk that raced through OBS channels. A redder coma early, shifting greener as C2 and CN radicals grew with heat. If verified, that reinforces carbon-rich chemistry and a coma, lighting up as new layers expose. But again, chain of custody, HST, give timing and photometry, Gemini spectra nail lines. Until the papers settle, we flag, we don't overclaim. Bottom line, the tear wasn't a glitch. It was a signature of fine grains, patchy venting, slow wobble, and likely CO2. Forward activity. A comet can be normal in parts and alien in ratios. 3. I Atlas looked like both at once. Then came the geometry. As elongation fell toward conjunction, coronagraph teams ran the math. Magnitude to 12. Angular size tiny. Background a boiling. Cauldron. Soho Lasco C3. Too faint against the corona. Stereo. Similar story. Parker and Solar Orbiter wrong instruments for a dot this dim. Even if you try shift and stack a line hundreds of frames along the predicted track S, N, barely clears the floor for something this compact. And you don't gamble billion dollar detectors flirting with the sun's limb on a hope. Safety protocols lock you out before hubris has a say. Mars orbiters had a narrow shot early October and squeezed long exposures and coarse spectra while geometry allowed. But by the moment of peak heating, the window slammed shut. That's the blackout nobody can wave away. Physics blinds the planet for weeks, and your rarest visitor changes most while you can't look. What do you do? You mine the edges. Pre-gap light curves, spectra, AO shots, everything gets reprocessed, restacked, refit. You build post-conjunction campaigns now. Dawn reacquisition slots, high cadence cues, radar attempts if range ever plays kind. And you write policy so the next interstellar alert triggers pre-approved overrides rather than slack maybes. This is the part viewers rarely see. Redundancy funding, boring spare parts, shared maintenance calendars so three domes don't all go dark the same week. 3i Atlas was a systems test, and we almost failed it. If 3i Atlas really skews CO2, forward with H2O secondary, and a whisper of sulfur chemistry, it points to a nursery at the boundary where frost lines move, pebbles drift inward with ice intact, and hot fragments scatter outward with metal skin. In those braid zones, you don't get tidy categories. You get hybrids, silicates, and volatiles, co-sintered by migration. Hybrids matter because they're delivery systems. Rock gives structure. Ice carries organics, volatiles, energy budgets. If bodies like 3i Atlas are common, planetary systems aren't layer cakes. Their supply chains and habitability becomes a logistics problem. How fast the plate is spected, right cargo moves, where it lands, how it survives heat and shock. The tumble becomes more than aesthetics. A rubble pile with patchy vents is the perfect archivist. Its orientation changes expose fresh layers, delivering time series chemistry as solar heating marches across the skin. Our pre-gap brightening hints at exactly that new patches waking as the sun bit deeper. Scale that up. A massive low object venting in heartbeats that talk and drift, but never wildly history written in slow motion. Once you buy that picture, the unofficial images aren't needed to claim weirdness. The verified pieces already tell a rare story. Big, patchy, CO2, ready. Tumbling a hybrid that sharpens the edges of our models. Let's talk about the elephant, the Chinese frames. They galvanized attention and symbolized an urge we all share. Keep watch when others can't. But science has two currencies, photons and provenance. If an image can't be traced through instrument headers, timestamps and submission logs, it can inspire but it can't anchor a paper. By October, audits were consistent. The citable 3 iAtlas dataset came from Western submissions. That doesn't make the other frames fake, it makes them pending. 
If internal releases are later ingested with full metadata, great everyone wins. If not, we don't bake them into claims, full stop. Meanwhile, agencies did something more important than arguing, they patched the holes. ESA Space Safety convened with NASA, JAXA, ISRO, CASI, SANSA to stagger hardening windows, fast-track override ladders for interstellar transients, and fund the boring redundancies spare shutters, detector backups, contract hours that keep a vendor on a mountain tonight, not next month. And the community remembered what actually moves the needle. Amateurs and pros together. Rooftops plugged cadence gaps, domes delivered deep spectra, Space telescopes provided stable photometry when Earth weather lied. The fit isn't one country, one dome, one paper, it's a network with better ribs. Conjunction forced silence. But silence isn't absence. Teams line dawn slots for mid to late November reacquisition, big mirrors for S, N, fast cameras for cadence, radar gambles penciled where range might still whisper. The plan, pin the position early, lock the light curve, chase spectra before magnitude slips beyond reach. What are we testing first? Motion because it's the cleanest physics. If non-gravitational acceleration stays modest, despite any outburst, mass stays high. If drift steps up with fresh jets, we learn about active area and geometry. Next, coma structure does the tear persist on the outbound leg, or does it relax into a more classical tail? That answer fingers grain size and vent uniformity. Spectra close the loop. If CO2 lines remain strong relative to H2O, we keep the boundary zone red. If water surges as fresh layers open, maybe the claimed ratios were phase dependent, not intrinsic. Either way, provenance clean lines end the guessing. And if we're lucky, the light curve will finally give a stable rotation solution, primary period, precession rate, and NPA amplitude. That trio tells us internal cohesion, is 3i atlas more monolith or rubble are jets acting like thrusters or sparklers 3i atlas is outbound the hyperbola is set but it leaves a ledger on one side normal comet physics venting scattering non-gravitational nudges on the other unusual scale unusual cadence and likely unusual chemistry hybrid by birth tumbling patch vented and just massive enough to keep its path boringly close to gravity's script. That combination is precisely why it matters. It stretches models without breaking them. It also leaves a mirror. We learned our network is brilliant and brittle. That maintenance is a science decision when the sky sprints. That provenance isn't bureaucracy. It's how truth survives the viral hour. And that amateurs with 8-inch mirrors can prop a global enterprise because time beats aperture when cadence is king. The fix is unromantic. Redundancy funding, staggered hardening, override ladders, documented chain of custody. None will trend. All will prevent the next window lost. Because there will be a next. With Ruben coming online, interstellar detections will spike. Some will be bright, some will whisper. One may carry chemistry we don't have a name for yet. If this breakdown helped you see the whole picture, the data, the gaps and the fixes help me keep it independent. Subscribe now so the next interstellar sprint doesn't pass you blind. Share this with the one friend who thinks astronomy is just pretty pictures. And drop a comment, what's the single upgrade you'd fund first hot spares, override protocols, or provenance pipelines? We'll pin the best answer and push it to the teams writing the playbook.